What's going on guys, Mystery School back again with another video. Today's topic is the concept of the black cell and a little bit about ethnic cells in general. Let's go. So before we get to black cells, let's talk about the ethnic cell. So what's an ethnic cell? It's an ethnic, it's an ethnic minority or visible minority who feels that, that having a melanated skin and subsequent sexual racism has contributed to their insultum. So basically, it's a man who blames his um, insult him on his skin color, effectively. Um, I think it might be a little, a little bit more than that. I think if you don't throw in some cultural and um, racial stereotypes in there too as well, you can probably get more out of this um, definition. But at the end of the day, this is the, def the definition from insult.wiki, so it's what I'm, I'm going with here. Uh, it includes various subsets. So you have the black cells, which are the blacks, the curry cell, which are the Indians, the Slav cell, which are Slavic, and the rice cell, which are Asians. Um, they tend to rely on two various theories. You have the race pill, which I'll get into later, and we have the just be white theory, which is the idea that, um, you know, effectively white men have an, have an inherent advantage in the, um, dating market, and that they don't have to try as hard as an, an ethnic cell would have to. So, there's that. Okay, before we get to the, the concept of the black cell, let's get to the race pill real quick here. So, what's the race pill? It was popularized by various ethnic cells wherein the, they posit that a group of men suffer prejudice over conditions that are inherent to their race and ethnicity. So I would say this would also include things like cultural um, stereotypes as well as, as just the skin color itself. Um, you could talk about black cells being like, or black people being, you know, single, uh, single motherhood, so the fathers aren't, aren't there in the household. Um, Asians being very, very effeminate. Um, same thing for, um, curry cells being very, very flamboyant while being ugly. And then you have the, um, slob cells, slobs are just poor, stuff like that. So, you know, you have these basic stereotypes that could also, obviously, it's not just ra racial, although race and culture are generally kind of tied at the hip. So that there's a, I want to say that's not really a black pill, that's kind of true. They're kind of tied at the hip on some, on some level as well, so it's hard to, it's hard to uh, di uh, di uh, disconnect the race from the, the cultural race as well, but yeah. So this mostly affects curry cells and rice cells because of geomaxing or Southeast Asia selling, um, Southeast Asia maxing um, mayo cells or white cells. Basically, white end cells will go over to Southeast Asia or they'll go over to an Asian country where they're um, where they're more desired. So even even if you're like a five five out of ten over here in America, if you go over there to you know the Philippines. You're like an eight. You're like an eight out of ten because because of your skin color. Uh, this is a little bit racist because they're just, they're just assuming that you're a that you're a um, successful white man when you're over there. But at the end of the day, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, you're still considered to be more desirable than the um, the rice cells sit, sitting over there in, in the Philippines who can't get anything. Um, so yeah, basically the mayo cells are poaching the rice cells, um, the rice cells and curry cells women, and they're bringing them over here to get. To get effectively, you know, the the um, a mayo cell has to be careful when he does this because he could end up being a beta bucks or being used for um being used for a, a green card. So they they gotta watch out for that. But for, for, for the most part, though, mayo cells and curry cells they're being their women are being poached by mayo cells for for sure. Um, this doesn't really apply to black cells too much because black women are the least desired women. I've seen a study that supports this. They're definitely the least desired woman in the um, the dating pool for some obvious reasons. <laughs> I, won't, I won't go into here, but they're at least de desired. So there's not a lot of mayo cells going for black women, really. I mean, you'll you'll see them. Go, they, they might go go after a more um, an Oreo or a um, coconut style white woman, but other than that, black women are generally safe from this, this style of poaching. But it still happens to some extent. Um, these things are societally linked. So basically, white men are perceived and oftentimes do um, have more wealth and are seen as the apex of human society across the world. This is reinforced via Western media. So basically, Western media, um, the white man is the uh, cultural hegemon of the world effectively right now because you know, America is the um, superpower and really the West is the superpowers of the, um, the world right now. So we have the ability to push our media onto other people and say, hey, look, look at us. Look at the, um, look at these rich white celebrities. Look at these rich white society. Look at what, what we can do with our society and look how rich we are. 
and it kind of it, it reinforces this idea that every white person is a rich person who lives in a, a mansion and they all have money and they all drive nice cars they all are all educated and stuff like that so it's a form of internalized racism on the part of the women and possibly the men Count, there's countless examples of asian women lusting after white after white men so it's, it's so like sick dude like the fact that you have like a mother and asian mom telling her own daughter to say um no you need to marry a white man because you know like so you can have white children and it's like okay like obviously you hate yourself like on some level you you had you have to hate yourself enough to like to to, to to do to do that to your to your daughter and to, to do that to yourself to tell yourself that oh like i might have married an, an asian man but you have to marry an asian you have to marry a white man because the white men are just better than us and it's like okay that's like some pretty fucked up shit Okay, now we get to the black film. We have our or or Oreo Man here, literally Oreo Man, and it's a subset of e ethnic cell, someone of sub-Saharan African descent, incel who is rejected for being black. So effectively, you're an incel because of your skin color and possibly because of your cultural um, stereotypes as well. But what if and this is a big what if here? What if you aren't culturally black enough? Like, what if you don't fit the stereotype of being culturally black, but you have the skin color of a black man? So you have the skin color. You're black, you're melanated, you have um, brown, black skin, but you aren't culturally black. These are your Oreos and your coconuts, so but let's, let's get into that topic now. So, what is being stereotypically black, or what is stereotypical black culture? Well, most people would know it by the, by, by the stuff that comes out, out of the black community. You have rap, you have hip-hop, you have gangster rap, and dominate black culture. And these, these three genres, you have R&B as well, generally got dominate black culture as, as, as a whole and uh, for the most part you have like you know and the the mindsets and the, the attitudes and the behaviors that come out of these um come out of these um these genres of music this genre of um yeah, these genres of music generally are ex are what's expected that a black man supposed to act like like less you know you can take a look at like any rap video it has a dude you know you know dancing around He's, he's dominant, he's got uh, women all around him, he's got money everywhere, he's got houses and cars. You know, basically you're, you're a show-off. You're, um, you're supposed to be have a, have a good mouthpiece, be your ability to talk to women, your ability to talk in general, be a smooth talker. Um, these, these, this is what's expected of a black man. And if you don't have that, or if you can't do that type of stuff, then you're not really considered the uh, part of the black... You, you're not black-cultured enough for the black community. Um, the black church, believe it or not, is still a dominant force in the community. Um, Christianity, obviously. And there is a subset of Islam as well that kind of applies to um, the black community as well. It's not as big as Christianity, but it's still there. Um, the black community, by and large, behaves like a, a gynocracy. A gynocracy is effectively is, a, um, a, 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 is ruled by women. Um, you know, it's a matriarchal culture. Um, you know, black people in general are all about their mothers, and they don't give a fuck about their fathers. And on some level, it makes some sense. Like, you know, the, when the single parenthood rate is like 75% of, like, women have kids out of wedlock, and there's no father in the household, well, what do you expect? It's, what, it's what's expected to come out of the, um, the culture if it's, if it's only, um, you know, women raising, raising the men. It's obvious. Single parenthood, you think they're tied to the hip. Um, single parenthood, this is sort of part of stereotypical black culture on some level like this i just me like when when, when, when you when you think of a, of a single mother on welfare you're thinking of a black woman dude you're, you're not thinking of a white a white woman in a trailer park you're not thinking of, of an, an asian woman li living in some like shithole you're thinking of a black a black woman let's just let's just be real here real here for a second it's true um and then there's this whole idea in black culture about the struggle so what the heck is the struggle well this is my own personal definition that could be wrong here but in my opinion, the struggle is the idea that being black in America is a struggle, quote unquote, you know, the struggle, due to white supremacy and that it's something to constantly overcome. Basically, you know, to, in a nutshell, it's this idea that like being black in America is hard and you're going to constantly be struggling against the society at large to be black in America. That's all it really is. Um, if, you, if, you don't, if you've never experienced the struggle or you think the struggle is not real, you might not be part of black culture. So this brings us down now down to our Oreos and coconuts. You know, often refers to an ethnic person who behaves in a way that that appears white. Now the fact that the fact that the fact that um this is gonna be kind of funny here, but the fact that like behaving like a normal human being and not behaving in a way that's that's ghetto or ratchet or stupid or not acting like a, a thug or an idiot is considered to be white. 
said a whole lot about you could argue white supremacy, but you can argue also a lot about like the, or the other cultures as well. Like the fact that those behaviors are somehow considered to be white, like those aren't white behaviors, but we, but we consider them to be quote unquote white. It says a lot about the people who, who think who, who think this way. Um, there are probably more more racist more racist than the people who are like white supremacists. Truth be told, um, there's things like educated lames. These people here would be fit to cook the coconut stereotypes a lot. Um, Oftentimes, these people here, they have high education, but they're very, very, they, they don't fit in with, like, stereotypical black culture here. They, they, they don't fit in at all. You know, they, they, just, they don't have, they don't have the mouthpiece. Uh, they grew up in a two-parent household, you know, then probably had a dad and a dad in the household. These people here, they had a general, normal household, but because of that, they don't fit in with the stereotypical black culture. They probably do listen to some hip-hop and rap, but they don't, like, internalize it. They, they don't, like, um, they don't want to behave like a thug. They, they, they like they might like the music or not or something like that, but they don't behave like a thug. So you have this like a disconnect between like what's expected of you and what you are. You know, often don't fit in with their own race, racist stereotype, stereotypical culture. That's what I just said earlier. Like I said, you have what's expected to you, what's expected of you, and what's um, and what's and what and what you are. Like the way you behave and the way what's expected of you. People people expect you based on your race to behave in a way that's rather stereotypical even though we hate stereotypes we we still expect people to behave like the, like the stereotype it makes zero sense but it's true you know therefore you're a square peg um trying to be forced into a triangle shaped hole you know like you're, you're constantly in this battle between like hey i'm a square well, why do you keep trying to jam me into this triangle shaped hole i, I don't fit there so and at that point in you just don't fit in obviously like if you're supposed to be a triangle, but you're a square, well, good luck with that. You know, it doesn't it doesn't just apply to to eth and, and ethnic like you know Oreo and coconut really is like a, like it's an Oreo black on the outside, white on the inside. You have some subsets of um, white culture called like w w Wiggers back in the day, back in the '90s. They were pretty not popular, but they were um they were m more of a joke if anything. Like nobody really took w a Wigger seriously. But they were a thing because of um, Eminem kind of came out. It was like, oh, God, Eminem's cool, so I can be a black rapper now. Or, sorry, a white rapper now. But um, for the most part, these guys were here kind of jokes. I couldn't think of a curry cell or a rice cell one, but, I mean, the same thing applies, though. If you're a curry cell or a rice cell who acts white, you could, you, you could be considered a coconut or an Oreo. And when, when I say act white, I'm only using this term because, like, this is what people always say that it is, which is really odd. And it often means you get ostracized altogether. You know, you're not meeting the expectations. You're not being, you're not, you're not, you're not rising up to the stereotype. People expect you to act ratchet and ghetto and a little bit hood, but when you don't act that way, or when you don't behave that way, or when you don't speak in ebonics, or you, or you don't speak when you speak proper, you're basically you're breaking the, you're you're like breaking their own like reality. Like they expect one thing out of you, and they get another thing, and it's almost like they they don't know what what to do with you. Um, it kind of comes down to like. When it comes to dating, white women kind of want that hood demeanor because, like, they're, they're not used to getting it. So, like, if you're a black person who's, like, an Oreo trying to date a white woman, you might not, you might strike out because, like, you, you don't have that hood demeanor in you. But if you're a, um, you know, and if you're a, a black guy trying to date a black woman, but you, but you don't have the hood demeanor, you might, you're going to strike out majorly because when they, get, they expect you to behave in a way that is stereotypical. And they almost kind of want it because, like, there is some mystique and allure to having that hood demeanor to having that um to having that um you know that mouthpiece to get you know that way of talking you know the smooth talking kind of black man you know that um you know the the the, the whole behavior that comes with gangster rap culture there is a a a, uh, a mystique to it that if you can't do it well you get ostracized altogether because the white woman don't want you because you know they go for the whole uh, uh bbc meme and the black woman don't want you because, well, he's just lame. So it's like, oh shit, so who do you have left? Asians don't tend to typically date black men and um, curry cells and rice, you know, curries and rices. I'm not even sure, like I said, but either way, you, you're kind of striking out with the, with the two major groups that you could uh, date. So overall, if you're an Oreo or a coconut, you're kind of fucked when it comes to, to dating on some, some level here. All right, guys, this, is, this has been Mystery School. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, source for info.wiki, the brain, and the Wikipedia. And never forget, guys, that wisdom is gold. See you next time.